afternoon, guys. Um, so as, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Dev Sharma. Not to be confused with a developer, that's just my name. It's an Indian name. <laughs> um, I'll be talking about something that's very important in today's market. Um, you see a lot of trends, a lot of um, projects that claim to be legitimate, and they're kind of amplified by marketing. And marketing's kind of getting a bad name, uh, a bad rep in the industry. I get a lot of people just today as well asking me, how do you guys ensure you're not kind of promoting the wrong project? So I'm going to be speaking about just white hat Web3 marketing. A lot of people know what, web, what white hat hacking is. Um, it's essentially when you hack a company, you expose vulnerabilities, and then you report them so that they're fixed. Um, similarly, I'm going to first start out with addressing the elephant in the room, right? Uh, what really is the role of a Web3 marketer? And how can you ensure that we're not actually amplifying the scams out there? Now, to answer that question, now, does Web3 marketing actually amplify scams, right? With, I think the obvious answer is yes, it does. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I run one of the largest Web3 marketing agencies out there, and I can tell you that, yes, there's lots of Web3 marketers who would be amplifying scams. Uh, if you don't recognize this chart, it's, it's a good thing, because this was one of the biggest scams of 2017. I don't know how many people were still around back then, but this was actually the chart of Bit BitConnect. Um, it went up primarily because of a lot of affiliate marketing, sales, events that they did, but then also crashed, uh, probably within the same month. But while it does amplify these bad actors, Web3 marketing also amplifies legitimate projects. Uh, one of my favorite projects, Ledger, is something that's required as a digital identity to store your crypto more than ever right now. And it's been their marketing efforts, and it's been their, um, the way they've reached their target audience has been more so organic than paid marketing. And that's actually what we're going to cover next. So white hat Web3 marketing, right? Now, I'm just going to define this based on my experience. I've been running a um, campaign for over 350 brands over the past seven years. So I've identified a few ways where you can actually figure out if a company is doing marketing right, or if, it, if a marketing contractor or a company is um, promoting the product, project, is supporting the right way or not. It's very simple. There's basically three main things you need to look at. Number one, you need to really get good at saying no. So as a marketer, you're going to be approached, especially in this market, by a lot of projects. Uh, you need to say no to more of them than you say yes. And here's how you figure out if a project is worth kind of exploring or not. So number one, just look at their smart contract audits, right? Look at any vulnerabilities that they have in their code so that you're not marketing something that gets scammed later. I think that's just pretty much obvious. Second is look at their tokenomics and roadmap. One of the things that I see often is now, this might seem very familiar. Q1, developing a project. Q2, raising a million dollars. Q3, getting a 20,000 member community to do X, Y, Z. That might work during a bull market. During a bear market, it kind of smells fishy to me because you need long-term organic growth rather than just going out and just pumping a project everywhere. So be wary of projects and founders like those. The next and the obvious one is team background, but you'd be surprised how many people miss this. Uh, if your project is anonymous, if, there's, if it's a first-time founder, you need to do even more due diligence. Then look at and work with teams that focus on long-term growth. So if you've got a team that only invests their marketing budget in influencers, or only wants to do paid marketing and just spend a bunch of money on that activity for three months and then not really worry about, let's say, building an organic community, then that's a project you 
definitely need to say no to. Uh, rather, the guys that are doing it well, the ones who survive the bear market, are going for a more organic approach. So what do I mean by an organic approach? So a marketer's job is not just to kind of promote the project. It's also to give the product, product guys or the developers feedback. So if you've built a community, if you already have a set of users, then use those users to actually improve the product. Give them something that they actually need. Um, test the market fit. Watch out for red flags, right? Founders or teams that say, I want my token price to be $3 from $0.3 next month. Uh, run from those kind of projects. Because that's the only way they're going to do that is pump and then pumping it through influencers or PR, and then it's going to dump as fast as well. Then, as a marketer, you can also focus on partnerships. So Web3 marketing is a lot about how can you add value or a partner to a brand that actually provides utility either to their token or to a project. For example, for a lot of our metaverse clients um, who are adding utility to NFTs, we connect them with legitimate NFTs so that they can build a 3D model for their holders on the NFT, um, on their metaverse. So that kind of adds utility to an NFT um, project that has their next development coming up in, let's say, six months. Then some of the things that you can also do in terms of organic marketing is SEO. Um, one of the biggest things that any project wants is getting organic visitors. No one wants to pay from users anymore, uh, especially during a bear market. So an SEO expert or an SEO marketing agency can help you over a period of time start getting in your Web3 community users, actually getting in them, uh, getting the users from a pull-based model rather than a push-based model, where you're pushing your content through influencers on them. Then content and email automation also helps you build a lead flow. Again, something that helps you just build your product and your community over a period of six to eight months. And lastly, building product virality. So if your product in itself is viral, think of the best products out there. Dropbox gives you more space when you invite more people. Um, that's one of the main growth factors during their early launch. Uh, if your product has inherent virality, a marketing effort or a Web3 marketing effort can help amplify that. Um, and lastly, use paid marketing, but use it very, very judiciously. So if you have a launch coming up, if you have something that you want the extended users to know about, that's the time you do use paid marketing. But it should not be the only thing you do. A good rule of thumb that I've, I've uh, followed at BlockWiz is it should be less than 20% of your overall marketing budget. These are the three things that ensure that the team as well as the company or the individual running Web3 marketing is doing it right, and more importantly is doing it right for the right reasons as well, and it also sustains during a bear market. Because you, you're going to see a lot of projects during what's happening right now what happened in 2017, or even prior to that, just die off when the, when the initial crux of users who just wanted to make more money leave the ecosystem. So that's the three rules that I wanted to talk about on Web3 marketing. Um, we're going to be having more panels as well as a few more keynotes on Web3 marketing. I'm honored to open the section and give a keynote on the topic. And I hope all of you have a great time learning about this. Thanks so much, guys.